Hello Illustrators, welcome to Boise State University. So you've started your college adventure, and you're excited for the future career that you've chosen, and you're more than ready to start sketching, drawing, painting, and stretching those creative wings. But there's more to your degree than just the future of your works. You need a little bit of what has gone on before to influence what should go on ahead. One word. Prerequisite. Art History 102 is one of them. Renaissance to modern art. So what does art history have to do with illustration? Well, nothing. Let me explain. When artists start drawing these days, they don't start by studying all their works of art. They consider the world around them from their own personal perspective. When you started drawing at the wee age of, well, young, I bet you drew something like this. When you saw a tree, you saw a stick with a green lump on top. Sure, intelligently, you know that the tree trunk is covered in a textured bark, and that the lump up top was actually created from thousands of little vein leaves. Yet you idealize this tree by making it a unified ball of green. As you got older, and learned how the world actually worked, you developed your own technical virtuosity and created what you saw, both visual and imaginative. So, in theory, we actually don't really need to take art history, really. But it's a prerequisite, and it actually has substantial value. Studying art forms of the past is a way to start at the beginning without having to start with that ball of tree. To understand art as a future, we need to see the responses of the past. Illustration is no different. It has a place, a passage, a need to become more than just a language. In order to convey that message, we need to know how to wield more than just the observed. We need to be able to tell our meta-narrative without unknown connotation. That is why we study art with the past. Illustration is something that we work towards. We have a need to draw, sure, but we also have a need to create a world where the story can be told. Artists from all ages have been working towards that same goal for centuries. But artwork isn't always like that. It hasn't always been like that. That's something we wouldn't know if we didn't study art as having intrinsic historical value. Let's go over some artists' works which have been paramount in the creation of illustration as we see it today. Completed in 1886, Edgar Degas' The Tub was created in a time when social change forced artists to look at the world as being constantly impermanent. This work, done in the completely new avid guard style of Impressionism, which was interested in reproducing singular moments, captures that modernist theory. By learning past names of works, and categorizing them into divisions or types, such as Impressionism. We are then able to use these distinctions in order to accurately describe and catalog our own personal, personal works. William Blake, an established poet and artist by 1780, believed that the human quest for rationalization killed the creative spirit. By creating works that flowed from his dreamlike spirituality, he sought to create a piece that married both God as creator and as wisdom. The prophecy does just that. By mixing his mediums in this piece, relief etching and hand coloring, Blake further materialized this journey. As, ar as artists, as illustrators, we need to learn that what we use to make an artwork oftentimes reflects on the integral meaning of it. By seeing how past masters have utilized their materials, we can use their trials and tribulations to our own personal advantage. Venus, Cupid, Folly, and Time, a masterpiece from 1546, was a shift from the time-honored tradition of straightforward messages as seen in Renaissance works. The allegorical deciphering of this piece has a wide range of interpretations. But this manner's painter's depictions of love, envy, deceit, and folly are all told through very symbolism. As visual storytellers, illustrators need to quickly learn symbols and allegories. Without this knowledge, we cannot imbue our own work with clever nuances and meaning. Guernica by Pablo Picasso was created in 1937. 
As a response to the bombing of Guernica, the town title piece was made to place the focus on human grief and suffering in the face of senseless slaughter. Picasso further pushed his style, cubism, to influence the work by fragmenting the imagery to show dissections and contortions of the human body. As storytellers, we can become political, social, and cultural explorers by isolating specific events and selecting how we want to show our commentary. And only by seeing other artists' interpretations of events can we learn how to formulate our visual language in a stimulating way. Francisco Goya's The Soup of Reason Produces Monsters from 1798 shows the exotic and strange unleashing of terrors and emotions. This creates a dreamlike visage of the imaginative interpretation of the self, with its exploration into artistically navigating our emotional ties between what we know and what we feel, Goya shows us a snapshot of the artist in the moment of weakness. By studying works of art such as this, we learn of the importance of artistic vulnerability. We must place bits of ourselves into our projects in order to speak through this visual language. But more than that, all of these examples put together, art is a way of life. Art's a new perception on the world. It's a new lens, if you will. It's a visual history of what has gone on before, and an innovative way to see our future. There are so many art pieces that can change the way the world works, if only people chose to look and see. By taking this course, you're giving yourself the opportunity to let those masterpiece artists impart their visceral knowledge on how to analyze and interpret, then to create from a new influence. See, play, grow. Welcome to the Boise State University Illustration Program.